Welcome to Accessible Art History, the podcast, the best place for art history lovers or anyone that is curious. My name is Annalisa, and I'm going to be sharing an amazing Metropolitan Masterpiece with you today. Just a quick reminder before the episode starts, all sources and images will be posted on the Accessible Art History blog. You can find a link in the episode description, as well as on Instagram at accessible.art.history and at metropolitan.masterpieces. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get started. I can't believe that season 14 is finally here. After visiting the Metropolitan Museum of Art over the summer, I knew I had to dedicate a season to exploring its incredible collection. It was difficult to narrow down my choices to only 15 masterpieces. As I mentioned in the season's trailer, the museum's collection hosts art from cultures all over the world from the last 5,000 years. To kick this season off, I want to showcase a work that has captured my imagination since college. The Portrait of Madame X by John Singer Sargent is a study in contrast. It was incredibly scandalous in its day and holds an honored place at the Met Museum. So to learn more about Madame X, keep on listening. The portrait of Madame X, much like her sitter, as we come to find out, is larger than life. Standing at an impressive 82 by 43 inches, or 208 by 110 centimeters, this work dominates the gallery space. A young, beautiful, red-headed woman is the main focus of the work. She stands tall and proud but faces away from the viewer with her face in profile. Her dress is made of silky black velvet with jeweled straps. It fits her perfectly, showing off her figure. She leans casually on a polished wood table, giving an aloof, unbothered air to the piece. Even if someone intends to walk by it, the allure of the mysterious Madame X stops people in their tracks. Now that we have been drawn in by Madame X, let's learn more about who she was. Her real name was Virginie Amalie Avnio Gatru, and she was born on January 28, 1859. She was the daughter of Anatole Placide Avenue and Marie Virginie de Ternet, members of the upper classes of New Orleans, Louisiana. The family lived on the Parlage Plantain House, which was built by Virginia's grandmother. Her family were considered Creoles, being of mixed American, French, and Italian heritage. Sadly, Virginia lost her father when she was only three years old. He was killed at the Battle of Shiloh during the Civil War, fighting for the Confederacy. Five years later, the young girl and her widowed mother moved to Paris. Virginia was educated and as a teenager was introduced to Parisian high society. Virginia was an instant star. Her pale skin, reddish-brown hair that she accentuated with henna, and slender figure captivated people. Combined with her elegance and style, everyone wanted to be her or be with her. Virginie did nothing to discourage the intention. In fact, she relished in it. Even after her marriage to French baker and shipping magnate Pierre Gatreau, she had many extramarital affairs. These dalliances became the subject of many tabloid scandal sheets and gossip handbills, but she did nothing to discourage them. Virginie and her husband Pierre had one child together, Louise. Sadly, she passed four years before her mother. After the painting's premiere at the Paris Salon, which I will discuss later in this episode, the scandal caused Virginie to fall a few ranks in society. As she aged, she would seldom be out in public and died in relative obscurity, especially compared to her once overwhelming popularity. Virginie Amalie Avniel Gatreau died on July 25, 1915 in Cannes, France. She was buried in her family crypt at the Chateau de Chênes in Saint-Malo, Brittany. How did this, quote, professional beauty come to sit for one of the most famous portraits of the 19th century? Well, it all started with a connection. John Singer Sargent was acquaintances with Samuel Jean Pozzi, a gynecologist and art collector. Sargent ended up painting his portrait, which can be seen on the blog and is quite striking. After the transaction was complete, Sargent begged Dr. Pozzi to introduce him to his lover. The woman was none other than Virginie. In fact, the artist wrote to a friend, I have a great desire to paint her portrait and have reason to think she would allow it and is waiting for someone to propose this homage to her beauty. If you are bien avec elle and you will see her in Paris, you might tell her I am a man of a prodigious talent. Virginia was wary of artists and only allowed a select few to paint her portrait, but there must have been something about Sargent that intrigued her. She invited him to her family chateau and sat for around 30 studies and preliminary sketches. However, it was a taxing process. She was quite busy with social engagements and often got bored of sitting and holding a pose. Sargent followed her back to Paris to try and gather more material to prep for the portrait. In fact, he said of her the unpaintable beauty and hopeless laziness of Madame Gatreau. When choosing a canvas to paint upon, Sargent decided on a larger-than-life one to ensure that people would notice it during the salon show. Because the canvas was rectangular in shape, the artist had to use a different pose than any that he and Virginia had practiced. It took him several months to complete, but he finally finished it in the fall of 1884. Next, I'm going to discuss the response to this painting, but first, let's take a quick break.
Want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn money, all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. And when you want to take conversations with your fans to next level, Q&A and polls are the best way to get them talking. With Spotify for podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since I discovered Spotify for podcasters, I've been using them like crazy. I upload every week with Accessible Art History, the podcast, and I'm so thankful to have a program that's easy for me to use, especially because I'm not super tech savvy. I highly recommend you give it a try. So download Spotify for podcasters or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Hey there, my name is Annalisa and I'm the founder of Accessible Art History. As a part of my content offerings, I produce a podcast. For the first several seasons, I will be discussing 50 objects that shape the history of Western art. From prehistoric cave paintings to contemporary art, I'll be covering it all. The podcast was designed for everyone, from the casual couch historian to a museum's expert. It all fits within the larger mission of accessible art history, to create a space for art history lovers, students, and anyone who is curious to explore all periods of art history and human creation. New episodes drop every Monday on your favorite podcast platform. Make sure to follow the Instagram page for all updates at accessible.art.history. All right, now that we're back, let's dive into the scandal of Madame X. The painting premiered at the Paris Salon in 1884. It was hung with the name Portrait de Madame Star 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 in order to keep Virginie's identity a secret. However, because she was popular and professional beauty, people soon put two and two together. In fact, Virginie's mother even asked the painter to remove the piece from the show, but he refused, saying that he painted her exactly as she appeared. It is important to note that when the work premiered, one of the sitter's dress straps was painted falling off of her shoulder, as if she was getting undressed or redressed for a scandalous reason. The work, which Virginia loved when Sargent was painting it, was heavily ridiculed at the salon. Between her reputation and the scandalous nature of the work, both Sargent and his muse fell from grace. The artist even tried changing the name of the work to Madame X to make it more alluring and impersonal, but the damage was already done. Virginia stepped away from society and Sargent fled to Paris. It is my belief that in order to understand art, we need to understand the artist behind it. John Singer Sargent was born on January 12, 1856 in Florence, Italy. His parents were American expatriates who started living abroad after the devastating death of their first child. Due to their quasi-nomadic lifestyle, Sargent never received formal schooling, but this was probably for the best as he was described as a rambunctious child. His parents were both trained in the arts as his mother was an amateur painter and his father was a doctor and medical illustrator. Although Sargent's father hoped his interest in oceans and ships would lead to a lucrative career in the Navy, his natural talents and trips to Europe's great museums led him in a different direction. In the winter of 1873, Sargent was enrolled at the Accademia di Bellarti in Florence for his first formal training. The next spring, his father moved the family to Paris because of its reputation as the center of the art world. He enrolled at the teaching atelier of Carlos Durand. He was a bit of an avant-garde painter for the time and encouraged his students to start painting directly on the canvas without any preparatory sketching. He learned a great deal from his teacher and became something of a protege over the next couple of years. After training for a while, Sargent accompanied his mother and sister on trips to America and throughout Europe. He took traveling as an opportunity to study the old masters and his techniques. He started off with landscape paintings but moved on to portraiture later in his career. As I mentioned earlier in the episode, Sargent left Paris in embarrassment after the salon showing of Madame X. However, this notoriety did launch him towards fame in London and Glasgow, bringing him many prestigious commissions. Towards the end of his career, he worked primarily in watercolors, boosting his fame even more. It's fascinating to see how his style evolved over the years. John Singer Sargent was a lifelong bachelor, and many scholars believed he identified as gay. He was close friends with many of the big names of the day, including Oscar Wilde and Isabella Stewart Gardner. In 1922, Sargent co-founded New York City's Grand Central Art Galleries with other artists. He worked with the group until his death in 1925. He is buried in Brookwood Cemetery in Surrey, the United Kingdom. 
Scholarship in the 1960s reignited interest in Sargent's works, and he is considered one of the greatest 19th and 20th century painters. Despite its reception at the Paris Salon, Sargent seemed quite fond of his work. He held on to Madame X until 1916, a year after Virginia's death and nearly 30 years after the fateful show. Sargent chose to sell his masterpiece to the Met. According to the Met's archives, he wrote a letter to friend and director Ned Robinson saying, My portrait of Madame Catreau is now at the San Francisco exhibition, and now that it is in America, I rather feel inclined to let it stay there if the museum should want it. I suppose it is the best thing I have ever done. I will let the Metropolitan Museum have it for a thousand pound. It was important for Sargent, for his favorite piece, to hang in one of the best museums of the world. Robinson was thrilled at the acquisition, writing to the museum's board, I have tried in vain for years to get this picture from him, but for personal reasons he has always refused to part with it, and his change of decision therefore comes as a complete surprise. Out of respect for Virginia, he asked the museum to use the name Portrait of Madame X, even though her identity was well known at this point. Today, this masterpiece hangs in the Met American Wing in Gallery 771. I love the way that my American art professor, Dr. Susan Castris, described Adam X as the Kim Kardashian of her day. I think it fits her perfectly because her aloof gaze and form-fitting dress separate her from the crowd that has come to pay her homage. She is definitely worth a pilgrimage to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Make sure to tune in next week when I discuss Duccio's Madonna and Child. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Accessible Art History, the podcast. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at accessible.art.history and at metropolitan.masterpieces for updates and to keep an eye out for the next episode. They drop every week on your favorite podcast platform. If you prefer to listen on YouTube, you can find episodes there on well, about two weeks after each episode is posted. Cheers and see you for the next episode.